Hello and welcome back to Fallout New Vegas. When uh, last we left off, we uh, took Boone here to Cottonwood Cove and the fort, and we uh, killed Caesar and everyone in those two bases. The Legion does not like us now. But uh, I, I was going to start off, I was going to grab Raul for this next part of the game, you know, the ghoul we rescued from Black Mountain. But Boone has something to say here about us uh, killing everyone in the fort in Cottonwood Cove and killing Caesar. He doesn't think it's going to stop the Legion, but, uh, why wouldn't it stop the Legion? Intel we had back in the NCR said they had a whole succession lined up. They'll replace him as soon as word gets out. The other thing I heard is that he wasn't really commanding the army anymore. Guess we made sure of that. I mean, it still feels pretty good, though, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. That was some kind of stunt we pulled. Whatever happens from here on out, we killed that prick in the middle of his fortress. Ought to give the rest of them something to think about. Well, uh, let's see if he has anything to say about anything else now that we've uh, built up some history with him. What happened at Bitter Springs, Boone? There was a miscommunication. Must have been one hell of a miscommunication. Yeah, well, that's how they wrote it up in the report. We did what we were there to do. A lot of people got killed. That's war. Maybe looking back, you do things differently, but that's not how it works. In the field, you hesitate, you or someone you care about will die. They teach that from day one. Yeah, uh, sounds like you have some regrets, buddy. You don't come out of a tour of duty without regrets. It's best just not to think about it. Do you think about Bitter Springs a lot? Yeah, always. Even when I sleep. Maybe it would help to go back there. I don't think so. It won't change anything. And that's a memory I don't want refreshed. Alright, well, uh, I think it's time you told me what happened to your wife. I don't see what this helps. She's dead. The better we understand each other, the more effective we'll be. <sighs> Alright. She... I tracked her down. Southeast, near the river. They were selling her. Saw it through my scope. The whole place swarming with legion, hundreds of them, bidding for things no man has a right to. I just had my rifle with me. Just me against all of them. So I took the shot. You should have tried to rescue her. Or, no. Let's uh, sympathize with him. It's better for her to die than live a legion slave. Yeah. What they do to women. That's worse than death. There was no choice in what I did. It was more like being forced to watch something you can't stop. All this was only ever going to play out one way. It still is. I don't have any say. All I can do is wait for it to be done with me. You make it sound like your wife's death was inevitable. It was gonna be something. If I'd never met Carla, it would have been something else. I should have never gotten close to her. I've got bad things coming to me. You better keep your distance too. Why do you think you've got bad things coming? <sighs> because fair is fair. You're not gonna tell me? No. Sorry. Is it because of Bitter Springs that you think you've got bad things coming? Life has a way of punishing you for the mistakes you make. Big enough mistake, punishment can take a while. Mine's not over. Maybe you can make up for your mistakes. A murderer who does good deeds is still a murderer. And he'll still get his judgment. I left the NCR when my tour was up. Had enough of war. And decided I was going to start over. None of it made a difference in the end. How do you know your punishment isn't over, Boone? Because I'm still alive. Alright, well, uh, that's Boone's story. Remember, that one Jeannie Mae Crawford in Novak sold off his wife to the Legion. He tracked her down, and he had no choice but to, uh, kill her himself so she wouldn't become a slave, and... Combine that with the Bitter Springs Massacre, he just lives in regret. He feels like punishment is coming soon, and he dreams about Bitter Springs, and 
He's a very depressing guy because of it. That being said, we are going to part ways for now with him. We will pick him up after we're done with Raul. If that's what you think. And he's going to stay here with there. our friends at the Lucky 38. Now let's find that uh that old school ghoul here, Raul. Oh, it's you. You need something repaired or something? Well, uh, actually, yeah. Sure. I'll just pull a toolbox out from behind a conveniently placed rock and get to work. Oh, Raul, you sarcastic bastard. Talk to me in my shack. I've at least got tools here. All right, so uh, we can't actually repair stuff with him. Oh, it's you. Even though he offers to do it, but uh, let's have him hey, tag along. Stand here. Let's go. And let's uh, roller, sweet. let's go meet some more NCR. Actually, no, we aren't going to do that yet. There's a couple people that we need to talk to first with Raul here. The first one is going to be, uh, I think, Loyal up with the Boomers. He's going to be in the Nellis hangars here. Old school ghoul. That's the uh, quest we're doing with Raul here. Now, Loyal should be Thank you for your in help. one of the hangars, trying to remember which one. I think it's this one here. Is he over here? Yeah, it looks like he's over here. So all you gotta do is you talk, you gotta talk to a few different people with Raul here and he's gonna initiate a conversation. Isn't that bomber a beauty? Thanks so much for making an old man's dreams come true. Bye. Did that work? You really enjoy dragging me into situations where I get shot at, don't you, boss? Oh, calm down, dude. We haven't even done anything. Uh, let's ask some questions. Questions, boss? You mean you don't know everything there is to know already? Um, but, 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 this doesn't look like any of the important stuff, but we can ask him anyway. Can you tell me about Mr. House? Just how old do you think I am, boss? Because I can pretty much guarantee I'm older than that. Let me tell you a story from before the Great War. Everybody knew Robert House. He was a genius, a superstar. Founded Robco at 22. Dated Hollywood starlets, the works. They say he saved Las Vegas. I was in Mexico City when the bombs dropped. Even from there, we could see houses, defensive rockets shooting down the incoming missiles. Everybody assumed he died in the war. Maybe he did. But his robots are still out there rolling the waste. And now, a Mr. House rules New Vegas. Well, uh, you can't seriously think they're the same. Maybe not. Maybe the new guy is just a clever raider chief with knowledge of history. Maybe he just left instructions for his robots to carry out in his name. Or maybe Robert House uploaded his brain pattern into a computer and rules to this day a godless, soulless machine god. Maybe the whole thing's a crazy coincidence. Who knows? Who knows indeed. But, uh, I mean, maybe there's a connection. Do you remember anything else? I remember there were some weird stories about him, especially near the end. There was a tell-all in El Padiolico de las Arboridas by a starlet house dame. She said they never, uh... Now don't make me spell it out, boss. Anyway, she said all he wanted to do was scan her brain and make her dress up in different outfits. That's, uh, sickening. It was quite the scandal, at least in the Latin American tabloid journalism market. You're a veritable geyser of curiosity, boss. Do you know anything about Benny? Wears a checkered coat, carries a big pistol, got captured by the Legion, already done? Benny, huh? Sorry, boss. Doesn't ring a bell. And again, my brain isn't as sharp as it used to be. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. What about the NCR? They're all right, I suppose. Had a bit of a tough going there at the beginning. You know their first town was nearly wiped out by raiders. Anyway, they got their good points and their bad. Just like a lot of the old governments from before the war. What about the Legion? I don't really have a problem with it. People around here tend to see them as invading marauders planning to burn and pillage the countryside. But I've been to Arizona, boss. Before the Legion, it was a nasty place. So thick with raiders you couldn't trade with a town two miles up the road. Caesar's laws aren't nice, and their actions aren't always pretty. 
But then neither am I. But you keep me around. So it seems like Raul kind of sympathizes you know with the Legion here. But let's see if he knows anything about New Vegas. It's big, it's bright, and it's one of the biggest cities still left from before the war. Well, mostly anyway. It used to be just a curiosity. The buildings were pre-war. But it's just as full of raiders and barbarian tribes as any place else. Then Mr. House took over. Got the power turned back on. And got the tribes reformed into something civilized. And now they run his casinos for him. All right, it's kind of interesting to get this all from a guy who's been sure, around for hundreds of years. That's a good thing to see, huh, boss? Here's the conversation for talking to Loyal. Uh, what are you talking about? That Loyal guy. He's getting up there in years, but he still finds a way to make himself useful to his people. If you ask me, that's better than withering away all alone or holding on to some faded piece of glory from your past. Loyal's using his years of knowledge to help his tribe. It's a noble goal. Yeah, that's what I thought too. What's on your mind? Old history, boss. I grew up in a place called Hidalgo Ranch, just outside Mexico City. It wasn't much, just a bit of a farm, with a house for three generations of Tejada. I wasn't the best behaved kid. I was quick with my hands, with a pistol or a wrench. And I wasn't afraid to get into fights over it. I never killed anybody. But I had my share of run-ins with the police. Mostly my family kept me alive. This was before the war. We were far enough away from Mexico City when the bombs fell that we missed the worst of it. But things got bad quick. Go on. Just a few days after Mexico City was vaporized, refugees started pouring down the road to our ranch. We helped who we could, but there were so many. Eventually my father started turning people away before we ran out of food. Things got violent. My father and I got our guns, and we drove them off. What happened then? About two dozen men came back in the night after we'd gone to sleep. They set fire to the ranch house and barred the doors from the outside. My whole family was trapped inside. I smelt the smoke, and I got myself and my little sister, Rafaela, out through a window. But everyone else, my parents, my grandmother, my two brothers and two of my sisters all died. Rafael and I ran. We were pursued by some of the men who attacked our home. But I was always a good shot. The ones who came after us, I killed. The rest, I left be. I had to take care of Rafaela, not throw my life away on revenge. And you blame yourself? Maybe. I don't know. All I know is that for all my skills with a pistol, I couldn't help them. Anyway, that was weighing on my mind. Thanks for letting me get it out in the open, boss. All right, so that's the first of three conversations with him. You get it from talking to any of these three people in any order. You're gonna wanna talk to Loyal up there. It would help if I go outside before I fast travel. You wanna talk to Ranger Andy down in Novak. And then you want to talk to uh, one of the uh, one of the first recon guys. I can't remember which one. I think it's the older one that's kind of crippled by the uh, fiends. But you want to talk to those three in any order. They'll each trigger a conversation for you. Ranger Andy, if you remember, is going to be in his little house over here. He should be at least. Now he's going to make a liar out of me and be somewhere else. Ah, uh, no, he's here. Hey, what's new? Uh, nothing. Goodbye. Look out for yourself. Anything? Anything at all, Raul? Uh, over-elaborate mob schemes to take over Vegas. Reminds me of the days before the war. Anything? Do I have to uh, run through all his stuff again to uh, get it? What's new? What do you do here? I'm just gonna skip a lot of this. What happened? Let's talk about what? something else. Tell me about the Rangers. Did he do something to your leg? What happened? I think I already said that. What did he do? Alright. Goodbye. 
anything. Anything. Buddy. You ugly bastard. Do you have anything for me? I can't believe we're allowed inside the Lucky 38. That place has been a legend since before the war. Um, can you tell me some of your stories? That's what I love about you, boss. Your firm belief that one day you'll actually remember things people tell you. What do you want to hear about? Okay, that's all the stuff from before. I'm confused. What's new? Did you do something yeah. to your leg? I, I would think that's the trigger. Let's talk about something else. Nothing. Give me just a second, guys, while I figure this out. Okay, so it says I need to leave the building for him to initiate it. Hey, boss. Can I ask you something? Sure, what's on your mind? What do you think of guys like Ranger Andy? What do you mean, guys like Ranger Andy? I mean, guys who have a world of experience doing what they do, but have to give it up because they're getting old and slow or too injured. Well, I mean, even after the injury, he's uh, tougher and dangerous than more dangerous than most men alive. Maybe, yeah. I guess you got a point there. We're not just talking about Ranger Andy, are we? Not really, boss. No. After the fire, I knew my sister and I couldn't stay at Hidalgo Ranch anymore. The refugees still wanted me dead. They even put a bounty on me. I remember how scared Rafaela was. I told her if she came with me, we'd see the vaquero. She used to love the rodeo, especially the trick rider. We figured maybe we could find help in Mexico City. We were young. We didn't know what had happened, really. We didn't understand about the bomb. Wasn't Mexico City basically annihilated in the Great War? I don't think it was as hard hit as D.C. or Bakersfield. But it was bad enough. By the time we got there, the city was a radioactive ruin. Still, the city was full of looters already forming into the beginnings of raider tribes. Crime was bad before the war, but now it was a nightmare. We were living like scavengers, scraping by on what little food we could find, always looking for medicine for my burns. And then, of course, the radiation started to kick in, turning me into this handsome devil you see before you. Sounds pretty bad. You're a poet of understatement, boss. But there were moments it was almost worth it. I still remember finding that novelty costume shop. I was just looking around for something I could slice up to wrap my burns when I saw the vaquero outfit hanging on the rack like it hadn't been touched. I took it, not like anybody else needed it, you know, and wore it back to our camp. Rafaela laughed for the first time since the bombs had fallen. Wasn't it dangerous to be dressed so noticeably? It was. I started to build up a legend. Sometimes it headed off trouble, but most of the times it just started more. Young punks looking to prove themselves would come looking for me, but my eyes were sharp and my guns were quick. For a while, it seemed like we might even survive there, until... until Rafaela. Go on, what happened? She went out to find some food one day. I was sick, so I stayed in our camp. I guess it must have been the beginning of radiation poisoning. Anyway, it was supposed to be safe, but some raiders happened to pass through where she was scavenging. I won't speak of what they did to her. When I found her body, the only way to recognize her was this funny little scar on her knee from when she was a little girl. That's terrible. Terrible doesn't begin to cover it, boss. I let my whole family down. First the ranch, now Rafaela. I was the last Tejada. I guess maybe I went a little crazy then. I took my guns and went back to that market. I didn't have many bullets, but I had enough. After the raiders were dead, I salvaged what I could from the store. I was tired. I just wanted to be alone forever. So what did he do? I left Mexico City behind. I made my way out to the Gulf Coast. Eventually, I found an old Petrochico refinery nobody had claimed. I stayed there for a little while, and I thought a lot about my life. I thought about the guns I'd lived by and what they'd gotten me. I decided my guns hadn't gotten me anything, and it was time to give it up. I took off the old vaquero outfit and put on a Petro Chico jumpsuit. The name tag said Miguel, so I started using the name myself. Eventually, I made it to Arizona. 
That's our story, boss. All right, so we got a little more of his backstory here. Before we get the final part, we're gonna head down to that direction that we were gonna go to at the end of last episode. Do a small NCR quest there. And then we will uh, head to our next location, Forlorn Hope, and we'll get the last bit of his story there. But for now, is it down here? No, it's further down the road this way. This road splits off in two directions. If you go north, you'll find the town of Nelson, which is taken over by Legion. We'll be dealing with that in a few episodes. If you go south, you'll find this NCR quest that we're looking for. I think the guy that gives it is uh, right here, maybe. So we'll talk to him and see what he has for us to do. Yeah, Raul, he's not a uh, major important companion. But he does have a really interesting backstory. Hold up there. This area is locked down by the NCR military until we can dislodge some Legion snakes from Nelson. Well, uh, the name's Nixus. Oh, heck. I've heard of you. You're supposed to be a regular hero or something, ain't that right? But maybe you're a little too reputable to get involved in some dirty work for the Republic. Are you interested in cracking jokes or getting something done? <laughs> well, I'll be damned. Looks like you've got some dirt in you after all. If you had a few dozen doses of Psycho on you, maybe we could pep those weepy troopers into charging down into Nelson and taking back the camp. But since that's not likely, you could help me take out the Legion's trooper hostages. Don't you have authority to command the troopers to go in? I'm a ranger. They're troopers. Different branches. I don't have authority over them even though they're as green as a super mutant's backside. Besides, they probably start crying as soon as they saw the hostages get so much as a bruise. Nope. They don't got the stomach for it. Why take out the hostages? The troopers won't go down into camp with their comrades at risk. A dirty game the Legion likes to roll out whenever they get a chance. Problem is, Ranger Milo doesn't want to play. If we take out the hostages, they've got squat for leverage. Why don't you try and rescue them? Back at Ranger School, they taught us not to run headlong into a battle when you're outnumbered 10 to 1. You want to go down there and try to haul those crippled boys off those poles? You're dumber than you look. I mean, I just charged into the main Legion camp and killed the leader of the Legion with two people helping me, one a robot. But, uh, fine, let's go. Good. We clear out the hostages. They lose their advantage. They're down in a clearing, crucified on some telephone poles. I'll cover you from the ridge. Just make it quick. These boys should be put out of their misery, not plink to death with some old varmint rifle. And don't get any dreamy notions about playing the hero and dragging these boys out. You'll get sworn. Now let's go. Alright, we're actually going to leave that for a bit. For when we actually do go to Nelson. And, uh, spoiler alert, we aren't killing these guys. We're going to rescue them. But for now, I kind of want to avoid Nelson altogether. Hopefully he just stays there and he doesn't cause any trouble. Oh, he is causing trouble. He is definitely causing trouble. I hope he's not causing too much trouble. That's Nelson right down there. Where we want to avoid. I didn't realize we'd be getting so close to it. Do you think he'll be okay over there? I mean, I kind of want to just leave this. I want to go back and do that later. I'm going to hope he stays okay over there. I'm just going to ignore him and let him do his thing, honestly. Because I don't really want to mess with Nelson because it might ruin something later on. I want to talk to this guy over here, actually. Ow, that hurt a little. Alright, right over here, this guy here. You're the courier I've heard so much about. My squad needs your assistance. Why are you out here alone? My squad was ambushed by a legion party led by that bastard Alexis. He was taking us into the mine up ahead, but I managed to get away. I need help to get them out. I'll take a look and see if there's anything I can do. That's already more than I was expecting. I'll keep watch to make sure no more legion come up the road. Good luck. Alright, so now we're going into this mine and rescuing some NCR here. 
should be uh, there's going to be a bunch of legion here it's one of the reasons I didn't really want to do this until after I pissed off everyone at the fort and here they come they're charging me oh man oh man oh man Raul does have some skill with the gun if you uh, were curious almost as good as Boone I'd say where's the entrance to this place is it up here yeah, up in here. Here we go. So we're going to come in here and we're going to rescue some hostages, apparently. I don't know how big this cave is. I do see a lot of red on our map, though. A lot of red. I don't know why, but I think Eddie spawned further in the cave, so he's already down there clearing everything out, it seems. Might just take our time and uh, unlock this first. See what's in here. Got a doctor's bag, a super stim pack, boxing times, some good stuff. Looks like there's only one guy left. Oh, and he's over here hiding. Hey guys, I helped. I helped, I killed one of them. Yeah, I don't know why it spawned Eddie already way inside, but uh, it worked out, I guess. Alright, we got Explorer Hoods, Legion Recruit Armor. Oh, there's still more of them. They're still taking them out. Or Eddie is. Eddie's just, oh my god, Eddie is cleaning up in here. Look at this. Oh my god, Eddie, what are you doing? doing Jesus they're all dead you, you see this Raul Jesus Christ Eddie is a don't mess with Eddie do not mess with Eddie now where are these hostages I'm looking for I don't see them anywhere they didn't die did they I see anywhere I wonder Shows them over here. What's the map look like for this place? I'm a little lost. Also, it looks like I need to go that way, actually. This is just an offshoot with a bunch of Legion in it for Eddie to kill, apparently. Alright, well, uh, let's go ahead and head back. Head the other way. Rescue these hostages. And we'll uh, go tell the guy outside. I think it's uh, just across on the other side of this room here. Yeah, it looks like there's a whole section that we missed here. So go ahead and head in here, up here. There's going to be more Legion for us to actually kill here. Oh my goodness. I didn't even see that guy. And there we go. It's more Legion dead. Let's go ahead and unlock this. I'm sure you can get a key off of one of the bodies. I'm not too worried about it, though. Hey, get out of here. The Legion will pay for this. Yeah, I'd like to see what you can do for the Legion. You can't even uh, get out of here on your own. I swear, we gotta do everything for the NCR. Everything. Get out of here, man. Alright, were they the only two? I think they were the only two. You do have to get them out of here safely, or you'll fail the quest, I think. I don't know. No, we just, uh, we got the thing, so we're good. Alright, we'll go turn this in, and then we'll head to the next NCR camp to get things started there. Um... Shit. Shit. Maybe we shouldn't have left that guy over there? Maybe we should not have left him there. Is he, uh... Shit. And I didn't save or anything there. 
That's going to be pretty far back. That's all the way back at the Legion safe camp. Shit. Okay. So, uh, we just failed a quest. And I'm not going to replay all that to, uh, do it. It was a quest to kill the hostages up there. I was planning on, a uh, when we actually attack Nelson, I was planning on rescuing them when we do that, but, uh, I guess the guy died, and I failed the quest. So any word on my friends? Yeah, why were they uh, in the mine? Were? What do you mean were? I got them out alive. I was worried Alexis had already thrown them down a mine shaft. I'll run by camp to see how they're doing when I get a chance. Thanks for the help. Yeah, get out of here. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this. I might have to do some consoling around to uh, get that quest reset. It's not a super important quest, but I would like it done at least. I don't know. I'll see what I can do in between episodes. Let's go ahead and head to this next area. It's Camp Forlorn Hope here. So we'll travel to El Dorado here and we'll walk right on over. Right, it's to the east. We got some red over here. They're moving fast. Might be Cazadors. I wouldn't think there would be Cazadors out in this direction. But uh, apparently there are. They look like babies though, so nothing too dangerous. Looks like Raul may have shot its wings down there, so it crippled and it had to uh, walk around. Which isn't a bad tactic for taking care of them, if you can't hit them. Because they do fly around and they do fly fast. Am I heading to the right one? I'm not even heading to the right location there. It's over here. I don't know what location that is. That might be one of the ranger stations, I don't know. But we need to go this way. We'll get this uh, last conversation for Raul, and then we'll uh, end the episode there. In between episodes, I'll probably pick Boone back up. And then I will, uh... I'll see what I can do about fixing that one quest. Because I would like to do that quest too. I want to do all the quests, honestly. And we've almost done them all, so I don't think it'll be too terrible if I do some consoling to fix that. Is it over here? Yeah, it's right over here. Now, if you, uh... Didn't get the Fiend Bounties in Camp McCarran, if you didn't kill, uh... Driver Nephi, Violet, and... Cook Cook, then the guy you need to talk to is gonna be in Camp McCarran. Remember, it's the first recon guys. And they stay in Camp McCarran until you take out those guys, and then they move to this camp here. Or learn hope. Now, I'm not sure where they are, actually. I would think they're in the uh, main tent here. You can tell this is a more serious camp because the troopers are starting to wear power armor here. But, uh, I don't... Here they are, right? Lieutenant Gorbats, Corporal Sterling. I think he's the one we want to talk to. Some skills to bring down that fiend. You done good. Is that Boys. enough? Do I have to run through his dialogue? Got a lot of dialogue here to skip through. How long have you been stationed? Is that enough? Do we have to leave the uh, building first? Got a second to talk, boss. Yeah. What's on your mind? Meeting Corporal Sterling. Well, it kind of got me thinking. Here's a guy that's been beat all to hell, right? I mean, he could have retired from the service. But instead, he signs back on and does what he can. You think he did the right thing? I think it's good that he's so devoted to his duty. More people should act that way. You think so, boss? Because I remember a time when a lot of people stuck to their duty no matter what. It ended with nuclear bombs falling on my hometown. You're talking about the Great War. What do you remember about it? I left everything when I left Mexico. My home, my family, my name, even my face. I know it's surprising, boss, but I wasn't always this handsome. 
As far as the world knows, I was Miguel. And I was okay with that. I headed north for a while and ended up in Tucson. Not Tucson, by the way. Things were good there. Well, maybe not good, but better than Mexico City anyway. I found myself a little shack and started fixing things. Fixing things. Oh, sure, boss. I was always good at fixing things. Some I fixed for the town, some I fixed for other people, some I fixed just for the hell of it. It's a better way to use your hands than killing. And even then, I wasn't getting any younger or faster. I lived there for a long time, kept it myself, didn't get into any fights. Hell, the only reason I even kept my guns oil was professional pride. Why aren't you still there? Getting there, boss. I'd been in Tucson. The locals can call it Tucson all they want, but it's Tucson, damn it. About 75 years when she showed up. Pretty thing you ever saw, boss. Maybe it was just a trick of my senile brain, but I swear she looked just like my Rafaela. Her name, Claudia. She ended up taking work at one of the brothels in town. I never went to her, of course. How could I? But I looked after her in my own way. What happened with her? This was a long time ago, before Caesar's Legion pacified Arizona and brought the Raider tribes to heel. A tribe came into Tucson one day. More a gang, really. Dirty Dave and his six brothers. They were looking for bullets. And I sold some to them. I figured if I did that, they'd leave town before they tore it up too much. But they didn't, did they? No, boss. No, they didn't. As I was saying, I hope they'd leave the town in peace. Instead, they decided to stop at Claudia's brothel to take the edge off. I don't know which one of them got rowdy first, but by the time I heard the screams and got my guns, it was too late. They shot up the brothel, killed four girls, and taken Claudia for their sport. Did you rescue her? I went after Dave and his brothers. They had a head start, but they slept nights. I didn't. It took me three days to catch up to them. Claudia was dead when I got there. They put a bullet in each of her eyes. I couldn't do anything except avenge her, just like Rafaela. I charged into the middle of their camp and started firing. Two of them were dead before they knew I was there. The other five, though, they shot the shit out of me. I would have died, I think. I wasn't so full of rage. How did he survive? By being a meaner old cuss than the rest of them, boss. I wanted to keep living until they weren't. So I just kept shooting until they were all dead. I was in pretty bad shape in the end, though. I don't know how long I laid there with the sun baking me and the buzzers chomping at me. Eventually, I got the strength to start moving. Some long time after that, I managed to drag my carcass back to town. What happened then? When I recovered, more or less anyways, I left Tucson and headed west. I ran into Tabitha at Black Mountain, and well, the rest you know. I swore I was done with the gunslinging life. I was too old, too slow, and too beat up to protect anyone anymore. I thought I was done forever, but after traveling with you, I realized I've always had my doubts. Doubts about what? about whether I still had what it took to carry my pistols proudly, to use them to do what's right. And now that I've been traveling with you for a while, you made me realize that I can still do that. Maybe I'm not as tough as I used to be, but my brains can make up for that. And my hands are still quick enough. It's time to put the guns back on. So... You can tell him that that's a great idea, or if you have the high speech, you can tell him that it's not a good idea and you should focus on your mechanical skills instead. I'm not really sure which one is the better ending for him. I don't really care either way because I won't really use him too often, so I'm just going to go with the speech 66 one. Yeah, I suppose you're right, boss. These balls are too old for that kind of action. And he gives you the full maintenance perk. And he has a nice little mechanic suit now. Which is cool. So I think that's going to end off this episode. Like I said, I'm going to pick up Boone in between. And I'm going to try and figure out to see if I can uh, fix that quest that we failed. Because I do want to do it. It'll be the only quest we wouldn't have done in this playthrough. So kind of upsetting. But that'll be next time. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you then. Bye bye.